What's going on, everybody? Danny here from Pit Crew, and I'm here tonight with Matt from the band Simon Says making a comeback. So I personally am absolutely ecstatic to have Matt here. I've been a fan of Simon Says for way longer than I want to acknowledge, so I'm ready to jump in. Matt, thank you for taking some time to be able to hang out with me, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Fucking, this is awesome. Oh, dude, a absolutely. So Simon Says is california based some some background on the band and y'all had a couple records out in early 2000s kind of that almost like an emo -y grunge kind of sound to it was would be how i would describe it but i'd like to hear it from okay. you i mean how would you describe it and is that how you would still describe it now versus when it first came out well first of all let me get this door shut because the light's kind of cracking through here ah, um, deal. <laughs> um, and look you just did you do how you just did that i don't know who you got in the room but that was just really cool the way you just kind of moved your hand and it just closed like that's how i roll i mean full disclosure we got zach over here he's just i'm in his studio right now so right on uh, what's yeah. up man <laughs> so there's all your guitar riffs and simon ah, says right there hell so. yeah um <laughs> uh how would i describe it um i think i think you're on the right path i mean we started in the early 90s um inspired by a lot of those grunge bands you know uh, pearl jam alice in chains nirvana i mean it, go down the list um so i think we have a lot of initial roots in that for sure um but obviously on a global level like we weren't really you know discovered or exposed um until the late 90s um early 2000s uh but yeah i would say there are elements of emo as you put it um definitely elements of of grunge for sure i mean i don't i've never been a guy that really cares how you categorize us um i know a lot of musicians uh, you know they they get really hung up on uh, being categorized i don't give a shit i've never given a shit because for me it's all about connection so if if compartment compartmentalizing Simon says helps somebody connect with us, then okay, great. You know what I mean? I mean, I we've definitely been lumped into the new metal genre. I don't have a problem with that either. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so the one of the I'm I'm gonna fangirl for a second because mm -hmm. again, like, this is just a really cool opportunity for me, kind of a, a full circle thing. So one of the times that I got to see Simon Says perform was at a uh, a an old movie theater in Norfolk, Virginia, and it had been gutted, and they were about to tear it down, and you were opening for Stained. Oh so, wow, yeah, you know the whole new metal kick to it, and I mean it was just it, it was just wild then. So again, kind of knowing the roots of the nineties and seeing it all evolve into that late nineties, early two thousands, just that whole scene is just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And I'm, I'm, you know, we, as a band, we made a lot of friends and we established a lot of connections and, and, and relationships like with bands of that era. So I, I hold that connection like really dear to my heart, honestly, you know, I mean, speaking of Stain specifically, you know, they were a band that, that we cross path with cross paths with. Um, and, you know, they, they were kind of doing their thing a, a, a little, probably a year or so before we really kind of hit, hit the mainstream. Well, I wouldn't even say we hit the mainstream, hit the national and global market. Um, as far as having a major label record deal and they were a band that really took us under under their wings and kind of kind of acted you know took on the role of like big brothers with us and they took us on the road and um you know i have a lot of good good memories and 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 good experiences with those guys and if i'm not mistaken now it's been a million years since i've toured but was that venue you're talking about called the norva it was not the Norva. The Norva still oh, stands, it. but it was okay. like it was just a few blocks away. Um, okay, called the Riverview Theater, 
Okay. Another time uh, that I saw you was at the Norva, and it was with a band called Boy Hits Car of that same ah that, yeah that, that same element. So yeah, yep. yes, uh, but <laughs> I that have, is, that I is have a good memories call. of that tour too. Yeah, right I'm on. sure, man. I'm sure. <laughs> So I guess fast forward a little bit, you know, if we'll call it a little bit and, you know, you haven't toured, you got some, some things brewing within Simon Says, this is revitalization. And I mean, let's, let's hear it from you of kind of what, what all has transpired. I know you kind of dabbled in projects. You've all of a sudden things are kind of heating back up and you've re-released some music. So kind of where, where have you been and where are you going? Um, well, I, be, I guess we can kind of approach this in a million different ways. Like how, how I'll start by asking how much time do you have and how deep do you want to go? Because I can give you kind of the cliff notes version or we can like really get in and like spend some time. So and I, 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 I get to... out. So whatever works for you. Okay. Um, I'll try to do a little bit of a, like, it's, it's hard for me to talk about now without, getting into how we ended up here um first of all nothing was planned um you know when when simon says you know when we broke up you know we essentially imploded on tour back in 2001 we were on the first tour cycle for the shut your breath album and uh you know it just <clears throat> different personalities in the band and it just wasn't working and we got about you know, a week or so before the end of that tour was supposed to end. And it just literally blew up and uh, canceled the rest of the shows. And that was the last time Simon Says, any Simon Says songs ever played. It's the last time, really, I think, for a lot of us, like we let Simon Says hold this this spot in us like we were so ready to move on <clears throat> um three of us went on to form a new band called pete arson which uh, essentially you know according to wikipedia it's just simon says with the name change i understand why people think that but for us internally it was an emotional thing so it was it was and there was never another simon says song played um, for us it was a completely new beginning but um you know that went on um you know fast forward you know yeah we've all dabbled in projects um zach who's to my right here he and i did a project together it was essentially his project um you know for a few years um i've been playing in and out of bands over the you know course of the last 20 years um but the the collective the group simon says like we haven't really had a close relationship over the last decade and a half um you know i think you know when you grow up together you know and I'm, i mean literally in the sense of, that's what i'm saying like when you grow up together i mean we started playing music together when we we're 15 years old well, i was 15 um you know sometimes you say things that are just really hard to like come back from you know you don't know how to process a lot of these emotions um, so it kind of took, <laughs> you know, 20 years to be able to get past some of this stuff. Um, you know, we've maintained relationships individually over the years here and there, but not collectively as a band. There's no group chat. There's no, Hey, we get together a couple times a year and reminisce and, you know, drink beers together. Like, no, like it's, you know, it was just kind of like it, it ended yeah volatilely and like that's that's how it stood and um again i get wordy so coming back to like like why we're here now um i none of this was a planned thing this basically all was spearheaded by a couple of fans really to be completely honest with you um anybody in the new metal world any you know nostalgia freak anybody that is like you know loves the the late 90s early 2000s new metal world knows who holiday kirk is um he is probably one of the biggest says supporters that i've ever encountered and i'm just now learning this because i just recently met him this year <laughs> That's um 
and um, he and um, some co-conspirators of his, Nick at Big Money Cyber Grind, Sean, who runs the New Metal Reddit for Reddit uh, or subreddit for Reddit. Those guys essentially had been trying for a long time to reach out to us and basically rattle us and tell us or ask us, why is there nothing available of Simon Says? Why can't we stream it? Why can't we find it anywhere online? You know, and they they basically their whole brainchild was we want to re-release Shut Your Breath on vinyl, CD, cassette, like like we like there's a whole there's a whole subgenre out there yeah. of collectors and enthusiasts that like want this shit. Why can't we get it? And they were trying to track us down for I probably want to say at least a year or more. Wow. And and like I said, I'm text hearted. I, it's not like I have any followers on Instagram or anything. Like I, I don't like I'm, I'm a nobody because <laughs> I know that's how we all categorize everyone. Well, you're cool if you have so many followers. I don't, but even with no followers, I didn't get any, I missed their direct messages. Like I, I just, dude, I don't do this stuff. So they, so Kirk took it upon himself to reach out to me through another band that I play in here in Northern California. And those dudes were like, Hey, this guy's trying to get a hold of you about some old Simon says shit. So just want to make sure you get the message. And me being forever the pessimist and just thinking nobody ever gives a shit. And it's like, whatever, everyone's full of shit. I just dismissed it. And I, I basically threw it to Zach. And I was like, look, man, if you want to run this up the flagpole and see if this is legitimate and kind of do your thing with it and report back to us, like, I was like, go for it. But like, I don't, this is a waste of time. Like, you know what I mean? Zach was like, all right, man, I'll check it out. Turns out it's legit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not only legit, but like a really fucking cool dude. Like I, that's awesome. Like you don't understand how validating it is to have, have somebody reach out to you you know 22 23 years later and confess to you how much your band like shaped them or like changed their life or helped them through some shit you know what i mean it's like whoa because like i said like i i've been so conditioned over the years and just beaten down by the music industry you know and i'm not trying to make this like oh poor me but like like I'm just like, nobody cares, dude. Like, you know, I may feel special about Simon Says, but nobody gives a shit. So I, you know, like, it was really cool that, like, we actually connected. And then through that process, we were like, okay, well, before we do anything, we got to figure out who's on first base here. Like, do we own the masters? You know, we were signed to Hollywood Records, you know, it's huge fucking deal. Do we own the masters? Do they own the masters? Like, like who's on first base here? We don't want to be liable for anything that we're, you know what I mean? Like in breach yeah. of. So we were like, okay, we're totally down with re-releasing the stuff, but we got to make sure first that like we're free and clear. So that's kind of how the four of us kind of really got back in touch and really reconnected was like, Hey, if we're all kind of into this idea and we all feel like it's a special thing, then let's all get on board and like kind of do this thing together. Cool. So after months and months of back and forth, back and forth, Hollywood records decided to put both records out on digital platforms, which is great. Super awesome. Unfortunately for Kirk and Nick, like, you know, it was like, damn like that's awesome like that's the goal all along was to get the shit yeah. available but also like damn like it would have been cool to kind of like do this thing together yeah but we've established a really cool relationship like it's all good like i talk to kirk probably you know every couple of weeks i keep him posted like like he's kind of become the fifth member of simon says honestly like <laughs> i love the dude it's awesome <laughs> um so that really kind of established the reconnection and and through that process we've kind of learned that there is this 
resurgence. Like there is this, this, you know, this following of people, this, this genre, the sub genre of people that like really connect with like that, that shit, that late 90, you know, you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I think it kind of, there's a whole lot of stuff I'm leaving out, even though I've been talking nonstop for the last 10 minutes, like, we're kind of, we're just in a space to where we can all appreciate it. We're all adults now. Like, you know, three of us are married. Two of us have kids. Like, it's like, who gives a shit about hurt feelings from 23 years ago? Like, let's move past it. And like, let's, let's just appreciate and recognize what's like what we created. And like, I, I'm really proud of like what Simon Says did. You know what I mean? And Sometimes it's hard for me to say because I'm just forever the insecure apologist. But like, like, fuck everyone. Like, we did some cool shit, and it's like, hell yeah, yeah. This is this is cool, you know. <laughs> well, and then to be able to all come back together and be able to to look at it with that light of twenty plus years ago, like who who cares, yeah. right? Like at this point, it's you're able to look and see the beauty through it which is yeah. not not everybody ever gets to a point with that, regardless of how severe things may ever get. So I, I think it, it speaks volumes of, you know, just for anybody, let alone four grown men to be able to get into a room and be willing to do that. So hats I off. I think we just had to, yeah, I, you're right. I think we just had to gain some perspective, honestly. I think we had to kind of live some life and, and have some low lows and kind of, be humbled a little bit to like really appreciate like dude like we're not here for a really long time and the fact that through two decades and then some we've maintained to literally live like within 10 or 15 minutes of of each other we're all still alive like what are we doing man like whether we do anything or not like why can't we just be friends and just feel good about what we did you know that's kind of where we're at <laughs> dude that is awesome like just yeah. i don't it, it's just the feel good story that you don't hear enough of these days in in, in in my personal soapbox of all the negativity that's out there it's just really fucking cool to hear something like that so yeah well thanks again, man i appreciate all. it yeah absolutely cool. yeah. so so now that you guys are back together there's some stuff in the works yeah so I saw there's remastering, there's some stuff happening next year, and I don't know what, you know, what you're able to share, what you're not. Um, I, I did see yeah, at least some some EP, some LP, some. <laughs> can, can you talk about any of this stuff, or do we absolutely, need to absolutely, man. Like, like, we're, we're not you two, we're not Metallica, that, dude. Like, fantastic. I'll, I'll give you everything. Yeah, actually, <laughs> um, let's hear so... it all, man. What you got? <laughs> so. So through this process, um, I, so I'll, I'll just, I'll give you the whole story. Um, we basically the whole goal all along, like I said, was all we wanted to do was get the records released digitally. That was it. It was like, dude, but like what, what fan base we have, what, what people out there that, that do care, like, let's just give them that. So, okay, cool. We accomplished it. It was kind of like, now what? So we're just kind of like, I don't know, man, like, who knows? In the meantime, through, you know, kind of going through this process or whatever, I learned that some some very dear old friends of mine in, in the band Taproot had kind of come out of a, you know, hiatus, if you will, or whatever. And I listened to a podcast that they did with Holiday Kirk and... um I got, I just, I got all in my feelings and I was like, man, dude, like, that's rad. Like, I love those guys. We used to be homies. Like they would, you know, we kind of have a little bit of history with Taproot. Um, So I was like, when I learned all this stuff, I was like, man, I'm terrible at maintaining relationships. I had no idea how to reach out to them. So I just started going through their Instagrams to nothing. I was like, well, if they're anything like me, of course, they're not going to see my direct messages. So <laughs> just kind of started like hunting and pecking and whatever. And I found a guy that I was very familiar with from back in the Simon Says days on their Instagram page named Tom Hazard. So I'm like, I'm going to reach out to Tom. 
clearly he's connected with the band somehow. I didn't know to what extent, but I was like, hey, Tom, I don't know if you remember me. This is Matt from this little band called Simon Says back in Sacramento, California. Um, hey, if you could just pass a message along to the to the dudes in Taproot to let them know that I'm super stoked that they are back and just if they ever cared that you know an old friend of theirs on the west coast is rooting for him like i just i think that's rad um please let them know so he hits me up he's like what's up dude i'm like what's up man he's like what are you doing i'm like well simon says just you know released our records and we're actually like talking again he's like what i'm like yeah so i don't i kind of just wanted to get a message of taproot but um yeah, this I don't know what we're doing with the says, and he's like, dude, let's hook up. Like, what? Like, come on. So, I was like, perfect, because he was really influential in trying to save kind of a lot of the damage that Hollywood Records had done with our first record, which I remember, but I don't remember every detail. So sure. we had a really good kind of catch up, couple hour conversation of like, you know, like just putting the pieces together and i was like dude what more of a perfect dude to like help us and just kind of be our cheerleader really and like yeah. help us navigate through this world that we don't know i mean we've been dormant for 22 years like we don't know how bands operate anymore like you know what i mean it's like so we we signed with tom and, and thc music and we're super stoked about that um and so where I'm going with this is like, so we started kind of putting together a list of goals. It's like, okay, well, what do we want to do? Right. The nostalgia is cool. That's going to, you know, that's going to be a cool wave for a while. And then it's going to be like, all right, cool. Like now I can listen to Simon says anytime I want. Great. Like it's going to wear off, you know? <laughs> um, he's like, what do you guys want to do? And I'm like, we kind of are open to anything. Like we were, like we're kind of riding this high and we're all, you know, we've all forgiven each other and like, we're just super appreciative. So like, I don't know. What do you think? He's like, yeah, I think we should work on some new material. And so anyway, yes, we are working on new material. In fact, I'm in studio right now. After this, Zach and I are going to start working on a tune that we've been kind of throwing ideas around and, um, uh, we are, so yeah, we want to release an EP before, I don't know. Everything's kind of in motion and fluid. Our goals are that we'll have an EP out before the end of the year or right around the end of the year, beginning of next year with maybe a new song or two. We want to re-record a couple of Jumpstart tunes, honestly. Um, maybe give them some overdue justice. And then want to kind of have an album's worth of material ready for, you know, maybe spring, summer 2024. Um, we're working on show dates. We got a couple confirmed. Um, I won't give any details yet. Um, but we're working on being submitted or submitted for packages, oh, yeah. um, festivals, um, anything that we can facilitate, we want to do, you know, I mean, we're, we're husbands and fathers now. So it's like, we're not going to go out on the road for two and three months at a time. And, you know, it, right. it's just not feasible. Um, especially a band that our level, like, you know what I mean? Like we're, I'm sorry, but if we want to go out and do, you know, a, a stacked, you know, two months of weekends and like fly out and do this and that, like we're open right. for whatever. Um, Tom's hooked up, you know, an agent. So it's, it's all in the works. It's just all fluid. <laughs> so the the excite the excitement is like I mean you're you're beaming with it, which is just badass to see. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's certainly stoked, it, it yeah. is contagious. <laughs> so cool. you know, so, so now I gotta I do want to take it a step further though with everything being fluid. I mean, I could see how you feel, but I'd like to hear like is, is that buzz there like every time you guys are walking into the room and is it does it feel real at this point? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the buzz is there. And again, I think it's because it's been so long. Like, it's like, it's almost like, I think underneath it all, 
like there's probably subconsciously been this inside of us that we've all been yearning for. We've just either been ignoring it or haven't realized it or covered it up with some other kind of, you know, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, the buzz is there. And I think that's why we're protecting it so much and we're not over committing to things and we're not like letting the machine just to start to like roll. Like we're being really calculated as far as like what we're taking on and what we're committing to because we're kind of like now that we appreciate it, we also have this perspective of like how delicate it can be. And it's like, dude, like I want this buzz to last as long as it'll last. And everybody's on board with that. So it's like, you know, for instance, our drummer, he's in Europe right now. Um, you know, I mean, he's, yeah, I don't know if you, you or your, or your audience knows much about, you know, Mike, Mike's lessons.com, but the, the dude dude's is killing it. Absolutely dude, killing a, it. Dude's a rock star in the education and the drum world. And it's like, you know, he's straight up. He's like, look, this consumes my life. And like, so like it, it's a balance, you know, I mean, I've got three kids at home. Um, Zach has a new baby at home. So like, again, it's real easy to get consumed and just kind of like swallowed up with like, okay, you're back, you're back, you're back. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's do this and this and this. But it's like, whoa. So back to your original question. Yeah, the buzz is there for everyone, but we're really protective of it. And that's why Tom is so perfect because he understands that. And because this was all kind of an accident, like, I think everyone on, on board, including Tom, realizes, okay, like, whether you believe in destiny or not, this is probably kind of like meant to be. So like, let's, let's just, let's massage this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so we're going to have a music video that kind of replicates the pick of destiny, but Simon Says style. I'm down with that. Let's do it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a little tenacious beat? You know? <laughs> that's right. You know, so, but dude, that is, that's awesome to hear. And to just, I mean, as a, as a dad, as a adult, if you want to actually say that that's debatable, you know, all of it, like just to, to see that evolution. And again, to just be able to get back into a room and, and, and feel that and to see that from, from here is just, it's just really badass to see and to hear. And so I, I do want to hear a little bit about what writing is like, you know, is it, how is, how has that changed? Like, does it feel foreign at this point compared and, you know, other projects aside, I mean, obviously says is says. So what's that yeah. like compared to what it was like when you first put out say life jacket and slider and, you know, like all of, all of those yeah. songs, is there pressure behind it or, is it just let's where are you with it yeah um it, it's definitely i won't go so far as to say it's foreign i think we've all done enough music over the last you know 20 years to where it's like we've embraced enough of the digital world that we we understand how we can utilize it to our, benefit us but in simon says particular it's completely foreign. Like there was no file sharing and just, Hey, I'm going to send you this riff from my house. And, you know, like you go ahead and put your accoutrements over it and, and you, put this, <laughs> you know, and then boom, we've got a song like, no, like the, the magic, if you will, without sounding like a douchebag, the magic of Simon says was in, in, in that chaos of getting in the room and the, the brotherhood and the, the love of connecting on something amazing and the just full out fighting on shit that like we couldn't agree on like that, that chaos and that, 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 you know, just what's the word I'm looking for that just organic kind of thing is, is what we built ourselves on. And that's really the only world we know as Simon says. So we're kind of doing a little bit of both. You know, Zach is a producer. He's an engineer here in Northern California. So the dude does it for a living. So if he comes up with a riff, I mean, well, of course he's going to send us ideas. You know what I mean? And he's going to send us demos and this and that. 
for us to just have them, you know, I mean, time is of the essence. So we're not 17 and 18 and 22 years old anymore, where it's like, this is all we do. So we can't just give up four nights a week to get in the room for four or five hours at a time to flush out ideas. So we're, we're using the file sharing to basically like streamline stuff. But when an idea comes across that we all agree on and we all go, dude, that's a banger. Like, like, okay, list that one down. Then it's like, all right, that's the one that we're, that's one that we're going to bring to the studio. and We're actually going to work on together and then hash it out from there. So it's a little bit of both. It is weird. I, I shouldn't say it's weird. It's different, but it's, it's all adaptive. So, but no, we're, I don't know how to be in this band without just rocking through stuff and flushing it out. Like that's, that's all we've ever done. You know what I mean? So. And yeah. so in stylistically has, has that changed? <laughs> Cause obviously you all have picked up some influences along the way. Sure. Yeah. I think that we, if, if I'm being completely honest, I don't, yeah, here I go getting hung up on myself. I don't think that we want to have an agenda. So that might piss some people off because I've submitted some ideas that are not Simon Says at all. But the other three dudes are like, that's fucking amazing. So why wouldn't we work on it? Yeah. Zach has submitted some ideas where I'm like, dude, that's not really Simon Says, but like, that's awesome. Like, let's work on it. I think by working on these things as a collective, it's going to just, it's just going to work out to be Simon says, like it's going to turn into Simon says somehow, but I think that we're all seasoned enough to just appreciate a song for a song. And like, that's what we're going to do. Like, so we're going to have some heavy songs. We're probably going to have some really like deep and introspective songs. And like, I don't think we care. And we've, we've never really cared. Like, I don't, you know, just because we're lumped in with a genre, we maybe have fit the image or whatever, like, doesn't mean that that was a calculated effort. Yep. Again, without sounding like a douchebag, I think we did our thing and the genre around us, like, pulled us in. Like, yep. you know what I mean? So, yeah, there's, it, it's, it's all over the place. You know what I mean? But in a good way, I think it will, it will all come together as like, all right, it, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. So now, now the selfish question. So you all had a really sweet cover of heartbreaker a long time ago. <laughs> so are there, is there like toying around with kind of any, any covers as well in this mix or is it Wait. just straight what you guys are doing? When you say, okay, I have a question for you. When you say cover of Heartbreaker, are you talking about like early Simon Says Heartbreaker or you, Peter Arson Heartbreaker? No, 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 no. Early Simon Says from Perfect Example okay. of Heartbreaker. Ah, okay. Uh, you, you dug that one, huh? Dude, I thought that was, like, that was awesome. Like, <laughs> like, I remember jamming to that hardcore, man. Like, That's so, funny. You know, like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, man, I, I, I fangirl about this kind of crap because just – it was all part of the playlist between that life jacket slider blister. Like, I mean, you name it. it so that's cool, just, man. No, I, I was kind of come that. along, particularly when you know that an influential song like that was just clearly you guys were just wanting to have a good time. So is there any other kind of song that you might try to grab out of thin air or if you could pick a song out of thin air, I mean, what would be your choice? That's a good question. You know, I, I honestly have not thought about a cover. I can't speak for the other guys. Um, there might be one that's that you know brewing that that one of the other guys has, has thought about. I know back when we were still together, um, we always liked having something to kind of throw in the mix. Um, we always dug when bands that that we looked up to did a cover, whether they did their own interpretation of a cover or whether they literally did it spot on to the original we just always kind of like that and i like when bands did something like out of out of the era or out of the genre um so that that is a good question man like that 
I don't know, dude. You might have inspired a new a new cover. I don't know. <laughs> well, that would be. I guess the only thing that I would say, if you if you're really looking to dig deep, and I don't know how old the kids are, but maybe maybe let the kids choose for you. That's that's not a bad idea, actually. It's really not <laughs> out of the mouths of babes. God, God, yep. that would be that would be something. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, no, we'll have to talk about that for sure, man. Very look at cool. you, Danny. Like straight becoming a member. <laughs> hey, look at that. You know, it, 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 anything to just keep keep the scene going, man. Like, right. <laughs> enjoyed it then, enjoying it now. Oh, well, yeah. let, let me let me switch gears because you okay. know I do want I do want to be mindful of time and everybody's you know wonderful ADD brains these days. We're we're I'll tell you straight up right now. Like I haven't been able to talk about this band for you know with any with anybody outside of my friends and family for 22 years. So. That's kind of why I get out there. So I plan to do this tonight. Zach and I are going to be in the studio all night. So you can go ahead and cut it off when you're bored. Like I'll keep talking. Then, then <laughs> shit, we're, we're going to keep this train rolling. I am gonna, I'm going to ask a couple of different questions though, and just kind of liven, liven it up a little bit. So that way, okay. hopefully people that are still going to watch at this point, they're going to be like, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? Yeah. They're like, fuck, this guy won't shut up, dude. Like yeah. And, 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 and then they get to listen to Matt instead of, you know, the guy that's actually asking the questions who just won't shut the no, fuck up. I'm talking up. about me. Won't, <laughs> won't <shut up. laughs> so, you know, I, I always like these random ass questions that you find online that end up going viral and they're like the stupidest things. Right. So sure. uh, we're, we're going to assume that the zombie apocalypse is happening and what you will be armed with is the last purchase that you made online. So what are you carrying into battle with you? The last purchase I made online yep. was a 49ers hat. Oh, I'm a North yep. Cal kid, man. I'm a team. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a diehard and like, dude, I, yeah. You'll, you'll go, you'll go into the lot, war so. styled. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 49ers hat was the last thing I bought online. <laughs> well, you know, at, at, at least you will go in proudly and styled. You got this, man. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a, a, another one that I love to throw out there because it really, it, it kind of humanizes this whole rock star image, right? So mm -hmm. what is your least favorite chore? Ooh, my least favorite chore is anything having to do with yard work. So whether it's weeding, whether it's like blowing leaves, um, and I don't have a yard. Um, my entire yard is like very low, uh, maintenance as far as like like water you know I mean we're in right. California so it's like at a premium pretty much year round yep. Um, yep. even when we're like in a flood it's like oh don't don't waste water um, anything any yard work is I mean I will do anything else happily but <laughs> I cannot stand yard work part of it's because I have um, you know I've got really bad hay fever allergies um and the other thing is, I just, I don't, dude, I, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and, and I have, I won't say I have full blown OCD, but I have OCD tendencies. So like, I just will obsess on like, if I'm blowing leaves, you know, we have a pool, you know, we're a really nice backyard. There's no lawn back there. It's, it's literally just like concrete and flower beds. And, but the neighbors have trees. And I will just, upset. I'll just keep blowing and blowing. And like one little thing will just move. And I'm like, oh. so a five minute job will take me an hour and a half because I'm so obsessive about it. Like, no, so I, I just, I hate it. I, I would, I would say you're preaching. And it's funny because again, in, in this humanizing element of a random ass question like that, right? It's, it's amazing how passionate people get about their least Straight favorite up. freaking yeah. shorts. God, Good point. you Good hate point. this, man. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, it's yep. just it, it's it's just it's always interesting to see what people come back with too. I just feel like it's ungratifying. Is that a word? Ungratifying, not gratifying. Close like, enough. Whatever. I, yeah. I feel like you, I feel like you work so hard to basically get things to look how they should look. Like, I guess that's kind of the best way I could put it. It's like, it'd be one thing if you did all this shit. It's like building something. Like, yeah, you work your ass off, but then you have this thing at the end of it. You know what I mean? Like, yep. something to sit back and just kind of like be proud you, of. And, and you appreciate. can marvel at it. Absolutely. 
yeah, you do yard work and you're like, cool. I just spent two hours blowing, pruning, clipping, whatever you're doing, mowing, edging. And, and you're an like, hour later. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, cool. It looks like it's supposed to look. Now my neighbors won't yell at me. <laughs> right. And damn damn <laughs> you know, HOA is not going to knock on my door this time. Thank God. Straight up. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll pivot us back to some, to some music stuff. So what do, what are you guys listening to these days? Oh man, I'll be, God, I hate to sound like that bitter old man, but like, be it, just be it, man. Own it. As far as rock music goes, I, I couldn't even tell you, man. Like, I, I think I gravitate back towards bands that inspired me all along. Like, I, st I just still listen to the bands that, like, I grew up listening to that made me want to play music. I listen to the quicksands of the world and, and Helmet and and Far and, I mean, Deftones. Like, I mean, you know, we come from a pretty rad scene here in Northern California. Failure. Like, I, I guess I just never stopped listening to that stuff. I do listen to, to new bands, but not so obsessively or I'm, I'm just not so about them that I could even really like name one. I mean, it's, it, it's so, I don't know, we're going to get super political here as far as like the music world goes. I don't want to be like hating on anything. I, You know what I mean? I'll be completely honest with you. Like I kind of gravitated towards some like country stuff, like straight up. Okay. All right. <laughs> You know what I mean? And and it's it's like Zach leaves the room I again. Think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because I think it's because of just straight up like we were talking about earlier, like just the appreciation of a song. Like yeah. and 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 country purists would probably say that like that ain't country. And that's probably why I like it, honestly. You know what I mean? Like like I, I I've been listening to a lot of Hardy lately. Um you know, uh, you know that I don't know. Well, it, it goes as back far to as... what you were saying earlier, though, right? About you know trying to to specify a genre for Simon Says and and trying to describe that. I mean, realistically, who cares what type of music it is? If 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 it's a good song, it's a good song. It it really That's shouldn't matter how like, I feel. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm going to be shamed by anybody that like, you know like my close friends because nobody i know likes any kind of like country i mean everyone loves to hate on nickelback i mean it, it's essentially nickelback is kind of a just they're like a pop country band with like you know like Absolutely. down tuned like like you know processed heavy guitars i mean it's like people love to hate so i mean so and then of course I mean? then you got people that are deep down it's like yeah i absolutely hate them i'm gonna go play photograph really quickly anyway. <laughs> like, you right know, you know what i mean who like this whole like shaming of what people like is yeah it's beyond yeah. Me. yeah i mean i there 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 are some bands out there like but i don't know enough about them to even really like like say that i'm a fan like I don't know who it was. Maybe it was. So I, I play, you know, I play in a band here um, in Northern California in Sacramento. I play bass in a band and like, like um, one of the guys in the band is like, he's, he's younger. He, he's pretty in tune with like rock and, and it might've been him that turned me on to this band called Polaris. I guess they're from Australia. Yep. yep. And um, this, this new record that they put out, um, I, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you the name of it, but there, there are a couple tunes on that where I'm like, all right, cool. Um, you know, I, I, I like some, some of the older Bring Me the Horizon stuff. Um, I, I don't know, man. It, it's just, it's so tough with me or for me because I just feel like there's like no personality in, in any rock music these days, at least that I'm exposed to. I'm not saying that it's not out there. I don't know of it. And no, I'm not fair. willing to really put in the work to like dive deep into like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm just, I, dude, I'm, I'm a dad now. I don't, you know what I mean? Um, Wait, my call son, me out too, I, Matt. thanks really. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have an almost 18 year old son who actually has really good taste in music, but he's so on the other side of the spectrum. Like he's singer songwriter stuff, you know, yeah. Elliot Smith and like, and, and stuff like that. So, um 
yeah, I don't know. Like it's, I think, again, I'm getting wordy and I just keep talking in circles. To answer your question, so much rock music these days is just background because it all sounds the same. It's all the same plugins. It's all the same guitar tones. It's all the same axe effects or, or, or whatever guitar mod, mod, you know, amp mod that you've got going on. Like, I'm just like, I don't know the difference. If there's a band out there, I couldn't tell you who it is. Like, because I don't, they're all the same I, to me. And maybe that's just my old man coming out, but like, well, you know, yeah, you, maybe you I got to embrace it. But you, you think <laughs> about where you are in life too, right? And and I, I swear this absolutely goes for me too. Like 20 years ago, we could spend two hours in a record store and just space out and listen to stuff right there. Like it is a foreign concept now. So, and now there are so many bands with such access everywhere that it's almost, particularly if you're wired like I am, like, it's impossible to take it all in. And so you just go back to what you know anyway. And so, oh. you know, like, at, at least for me now, granted, getting to do from this side of, you know, the industry of doing interviews and photographs and all of that, like, there's exposure out there for sure. But I, to your point, it takes time. It absolutely takes yeah. time. And yeah. my kids aren't always thrilled that that's how daddy spends his time. And so it, yeah. so like you, it's the balance. And when you hear something good, ideally it sticks. And then when you're put on the spot in an interview, you can answer the question. But realistically, a lot of times it's, this is really good. And then six seconds later, you're like, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. Like, where did I put my keys? Totally. And why does that, right. you know, what, what, what the hell? So right. I get it, right. dude. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I think that I equate when you ask a question like, what are you listening to these days? I think I just automatically equate that to like, who's inspiring you? Like, I guess I'm listening to whatever comes across my way, but I, I just, maybe I'm too jaded or maybe I'm just not open to being inspired, but like, I, I just not, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't, I couldn't tell you anything that I'm like, oh dude, that's like, that is affecting me right now. The only shit that affects me is the stuff that's affected me for 30 years. Yep. You know what I mean? No, that's I, fair. It, it's just, it, yeah. Well, I don't let know. Me, let me spin it a different way then since you, you know, you, you're, you're hearing it as a, um, you know, what's inspired, you know, what, what music is inspiring you, but what else is inspiring you these days? Like, is it just fam in general? Is it, is there something like did COVID change you and inspire you to change your perspective? So where, where is inspiration coming from? Yeah, I think I'm inspired by, by relationships, you know, and, and, and just really connecting with, with people. And, and because of that, there's a really small group of people that I, that I really consider in, in like my world, like, like that I would say are my, friends you know um i think that's probably really you know being a dad you know working on my relationship with my kids um you know that's that's probably the most that's probably where all my energy goes i mean aside from you know work and paying a mortgage and and supporting my family yep. um you know and i think that you know kind of bringing this back to simon says you know, again, I think that's why we're all so, as you put it, like feeling this buzz and wanting to keep it is because I think we're all in the same place. Like we're all, you know, on the, you know, we're closer to 50 than we are 40, you know, and like we've, we've all lived some lives, you know what I mean? Like we, Simon Says Connected, you know, I brought the guys together in the height of COVID. The first time the four of us had been in a room literally in 20 years. Um, and that was all inspired by the death of a close friend of mine. And it just really made me sit back and, and kind of go, dude, like as cliche as it sounds, like we could literally not be here tomorrow. And w what are, what are we holding on to that we can't just get in a room together and just like, just say, Hey man, like, dude, I love you, bro. You know what I mean? And 
so yeah, I'm probably, that's probably what is the most inspiring thing to me, Danny, is just, just relationships. And I think that's why I reached out to Taproot, you know, and, you know, subsequently reconnected with Tom Hazard is, is like, dude, like, I just, I haven't maintained relationships, you know, and, you know, I kind of have always had this attitude that like, ah, like, I'll just, I'll get to it when I get to it. Like, it'll always be there. It'll never end, you know? Yep. I mean, that's kind of was my feeling of Simon Says. Like, oh, it's never going to end, you know? Um, but yeah, that's probably really kind of the the one thing that I spend probably a lot of energy on. It's just working on and maintaining relationships with people that like, make me feel good like make me like make me want to be a better person you know? Dude, that's god awesome. damn let's get deep homie <laughs> here right here man just hit, hit all up in the field i'm feel, like I, I got the chills down the arm and like you know n- next thing i know i'm gonna have to call in maury and i'm just gonna be like all right we got this we got this. you know well, actually let me go ahead and let this next person in so here we go <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're, but you're spot on, man. Like, you know, especially with everything that the world's been through the last couple of years in particular. I mean, it's just that and just aging in general. And unfortunately mm-hmm. for all of us, right, it's just you, yeah. it puts it all into perspective. So right. I think that's, you know, take the cliches out of it. I don't give a shit. Like it's they're cliches for a reason, like and you're spot yeah. on. Yeah, 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 for sure. So. So, so let me, let me ask this because obviously, while I know Simon says you've referenced a few others that may seem to know the band pretty well, and you guys clearly do. So if somebody is tuning in, what would be your go-to song to say, here's, here's what we're about? Man, that's okay. Again, another lengthy question. Um, I'll wrap, I'll, I'll first answer with probably a song like like that encompasses Simon Says as a whole. I'd probably say the closest thing that is accessible would probably be like a probably like a, a blister, honestly. Like the song Blister. Hey You is probably like my my jam off that record. I think it was everybody's jam. That's why we like yep. took the record off with it. You know, you go to Jumpstart. I, I here I am not giving you an answer. I'm like listing off every song. Dude, let's let's do this, um, man. You know, Jumpstart. You know, as proud as I am of Life Jacket, I don't know that it like embodies Simon Says as a whole. Off that record, it's probably perfect example, like probably a deeper cut. Um, but here's here's the reason why I said I'll I'll answer your question with four songs rather than one. <laughs> That's but, all right. but, but it kind of, it's hard for me to answer because I don't think either record captures Simon says to its core. I think jumpstart is one side of the spectrum of Simon says, and I think shut your breath is the other side of the spectrum of Simon says, and we as a core, like the, the heart of us and what we basically had been doing for 10 years as a band lies somewhere in between both those records but we just never captured it on a major label recording we didn't that's fair yeah so it's really hard for me to pinpoint down like to nail one song down as like this is the quintessential song you know what i mean i think i think that's a (laughs) it's a great response it really it is (laughs) you know and and i think that's it is spot on because again there's there's elements across the board so yeah yeah jumpstart we got kind of lost in the machine um you know we were heavily influenced by you know a lot of executives around us and we just kind of got caught up in the moment and and just being told how great we are and you know probably trying to be I think a lot of people around us were trying to open our eyes to like hey there's there's a world outside of the sacramento hardcore scene or the or the sacramento rock scene like like this is this is songwriting and i think we kind of got swept up in that and you have a really polished pop centric rock record you know what i mean like we just in my opinion i won't speak for the other guys in my opinion 
we didn't hit the mark of what we were trying to do. Like we got close, but it, it just, it's not there sonically. My performances, my, my, like me personally, like I, I didn't, I hear uh, it's just not my favorite. Don't start, excuse me, I'm having a beer, so I'm kind of burping. <laughs> um, uh, shut your breath. Sorry. Uh, was a really angry record. That was basically our fuck you to the industry. And we were angry. We were mad. So we went overboard, like, and not, not in a calculated way, not like, oh, we're, we're going to be. It was just that that's what we emoted and that's what yeah. we tracked and that's what came out. And it was, you know, it was so neither record really captured what we were yep. <laughs> as a whole. So maybe this new shit will be somewhere in the middle. I, I, I don't know, you know, so. <laughs> well, that that's cool. And again, just kind of hearing even even 20 years later to know that there's there's work to be done and to see that opportunity for you all to get that work done or at least begin it again in earnest is just, it's exciting. Cool, man. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. And maybe, you know, I haven't really thought about it like the way that you just put it. Maybe that's part of what the excitement is, is everybody subconsciously feels like, Hey, like we can, we can like make those adjustments that we could have that we couldn't have made 22 years ago now we have an opportunity to like like do that you know so yeah well i know i'm excited for it i, I hear something squeaking <laughs> in the background and i hear my kids stomping upstairs so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a close so i could go give the kids cool. a, a good, some good night love but cool, man. matt this was absolutely awesome i am super excited about the new music coming out uh whether it's remastered new songs lp hopefully some dates that will find you guys on the east coast i'm very biased for that and looking forward to that where, day where are you at danny i'm in north carolina so okay i'm near i'm near my Charlotte. cousin i have a lot of family in north carolina so that will definitely be a point of emphasis if we make it to the east coast for uh, sure. I, I i would say that uh we we will do everything we can to show strong for you guys and and definitely Perfect. put y'all out here so that would be phenomenal <laughs> Oh um, yeah. Is, um, was I know you're trying to get off here? But no, no, no you're good. Quick, was 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 the Tremont? Was that North Carolina or South Carolina? Tremont. Piedmont, Tremont Music Hall. Like, was that was that we uh, anywhere in the, the Carolinas? Piedmont. We have Piedmont, mm. but I think that one's so actually this, newer. This isn't around anymore, from what I'm told. But I feel like we came through there and we were on tour with Stained. Uh, see, I have I haven't been here in North Carolina long, overly long. Okay, okay. So yeah, I was in good. I was in the Norfolk Norva area for oh, gotcha for, for gotcha. my quote unquote formative years. So, Makes sense. All yeah, right. yeah. All right. Well, we will definitely try to get out to the Carolinas. Sure. Man, it would it would be badass, and anything that oh, we yeah. could do to help promote the the new stuff that's coming out, whatever it is that we could do, Pit Crew is all for it and ready to awesome, ready man. to ho- ready to show up big for you guys. Cool. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. So Matt, thanks, thanks again. for having me, dude. Absolutely. Let me let me go ahead. I'm going to cut off our recording. So thank you all for tuning in all right. and catch you soon.